than the U.S. government has. Even though we've been fighting wars for the last 200 years, they haven't done any research. They don't want to do any research. They didn't have to compensate. So you should add that into your statistics. Just being a disabled veteran, a veteran that, that you're stuck in a bureaucracy that, that's, not, that's not even possible to fix. The, the Inspector General just recently, a couple of weeks ago, got busted. This is a watchdog for veterans. Uh, they got busted because they, they, the Congress asked them to do a study. Is there, is there a question? I'm getting, uh, yeah, can I finish? Okay, uh, you didn't stop uh, your friend over there. I know, I know, I'm getting the same amount of time as your friend. Thank you. Anyway, so anyway, the, the veterans, you see, you made me lose my train of thought. Okay, the veterans are not allowed to sue the U.S. government in federal court. Okay, and here I'm going to summarize it for you. So now, you have 20 to 30 veterans dying every day on, on holy days, holidays, Veterans Day, Memorial Day, they're dying every day. And that's over 7,000 a year. And is it mentioned in the news media? No. You had uh, that, that nightclub just a couple of days ago, 50 people were killed. A lot of them were killed by the SWAT team when they were trying to rescue them. They don't mention that. But anyway, the thing is that uh, you have between 20 to 30, up to 50 veterans dying every day, and it's not being acknowledged by the government, it's not being acknowledged by so the media. If you so actually, so it's, look, it's a silent Dachau in America. The U.S. government's killing its own people right. at a higher rate than the terrorism. Okay, right. that's it, I'm done. Thank okay. you. That's well, that's just nice. Yeah. Right. You have great right. 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 I have to speak up for us. With Congress, as it currently sits, defunding uh, housing programs left and right, how do you vision going before them to try to get federal funds for this project or similar projects? Yeah, so uh, we're actually not planning to get federal money. Uh, the kind of the long-term vision slide at the end was was saying like, hey, hey, how do we want to think about like solving homelessness from a very high-level <laughs> point, and that is finding enough permanent housing that can house all the folks who are homeless. And really, the best way that you know I've come across through all like the workshops with the Coalition on Homelessness and you know, other organizations that I've been dealing with have really just been saying that federal funding is gonna be the way to do that. In terms of our project, we we feel like what we're experiencing on the streets of San Francisco right now isn't acceptable, and there are solutions that we can deploy while they figure out permanent housing to find immediate housing so that people aren't living on the streets and dying on the streets. And we're going to fund that uh, privately and through through private donations. And you know, right now, the reason we're focused on doing this so cost effectively is because we know we can actually do it. We can launch this. We could have this up and running if we had uh, you know kind of land in the next six months or so. Private stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Just one more question. Um, go ahead. Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering a little about the infrastructure that this would have, because um, your one of the last pictures you showed was uh, like a big pot of land with several places. But I'm also wondering um, what your, you know, you have your phases, but where, like, like where are you at with your different phases? Like, is, are you, do you think you're going to get some land soon? Are like that, but then like if somebody comes on, I'm going back to the original question. But okay. if you like, will it have like lower? Uh, will it have shower and laundry or a library or a, um, you know some type of cooking facilities or a room like a TV room or whatever? So what's those are two questions, but what, what do you think? Yep, so the first question is, uh, the answer to the first question is what is gonna be there is 10, 10 units of housing, 
there will be two porta potties to uh, provide restrooms for those folks. Uh, there will be an on-site storage area, uh, so each person will have their own personal storage locker. Uh, and then there will also be a community hub uh, where these um, case managers will meet with folks. I, I guess uh, I didn't mention this, but it's really kind of crucial. One of the biggest issues with providing supportive housing here is that um, it's really difficult for people on the streets to uh, have a case manager meet them and have a consistent <laughs> location where they're meeting them. And so this solution is providing that consistent location so they can get access to all the services that they need. So that's the most crucial thing. There's also, you know, garbage, uh, you know, we want to have a perimeter so it feels, you know, kind of like a quartered in community. <coughs> so just in terms of the actual services that you'll get, we won't have laundry. We're partnering with the Lava May, so there'll be showers, but it might only be twice, once or twice a week. Um, you know, it wouldn't, at the moment, have water hookup. We've talked to the PUC, that would be about an extra 20 grand. You know, we can do these, like, uh, shower and bath units, but again, that's, I think, like 1500 a month. So there's lots of kind of options we can explore, and that's kind of the route that Dignity Village went. Um, uh, but it's going to take us time to get there. So the initial pilot project of 10 is going to be a lot smaller, and it's going to be something we can actually do and ramp up on pretty quickly. And then the larger village might be similar to what you, uh, you know, learn about when, if you check out like Big Dignity Village. Did I address your other question? Um, I, I guess I'm going to ask about it's a misnomer that you're going to get case management services at the navigation center. Their case management primarily, all they really did was put you in to housing. So, you know, getting help with all these other services, it was not existent. The post traumatic stress, the mental health disorders, it was not existent. So, how do we, how will you get past? that huge gap where you have relatively new case management and new to the city, not understanding or knowing the services, uh, be able to provide the services that people will need during the post-traumatic stress and the other mental health and disability issues? Yeah, great question. So I spent uh, quite a bit of time uh, at the Navigation Center and learning how it worked. Uh, I, I kind of didn't go that extra step, which is, uh, you know, and it was more because of uh, confidentiality. I didn't accompany anyone to the services. I didn't have direct access to people who had issues. Uh, you, you may not feel comfortable answering this, but did you stay at the Navigation Center? So I'd love to ask the question back to you. Um, what was your experience, and what do you think didn't work, and how would you want to improve on it? I, 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 I believe they just didn't have a desire to help people with their issues. They primarily was to dump someone into some type of housing stop. Yeah. And so if the individual was really ready or not, if he had the finances, they just dumped you somewhere. And then case management didn't continue once they got into permanent housing. They never really started. They didn't start. I mean, they, they got enough information so they could put you in housing. Right. That's it. Right. I mean, there was a huge, there was a huge, slightly fixable fault because they could have had people come in and do presentations. They could have had, I put, in the common area, I put a, a flyer about, you know, if you need services, go here. It, it seemed like they took it and put it somewhere else. They put it in their lot, their case management tent. Instead of it being in a common area where people could grab it, they put it into their area where it was closed by half of the day. So, so it's, I'm, I'd love to talk with you after. I'm sure we're yeah. running short on time, but I think you could probably give me a wealth of knowledge and information just on how to improve upon it. What I would say is that the organizations that I've spoken with are really interested in trying to provide case management, you know, in terms of what the city currently offers and how to improve upon that. I think that that's something that 
you know, I'm also learning about and trying to figure out how to do it effectively. So, I, you know, let's talk after because I'd love to get your input on how to be more effective at providing case management that is actually working. Okay, with that, we'll move on to the next item. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. We have thank you. three more pre presentations. So, uh, appreciate the coming uh, today. And uh, we'll ask the uh, presenters to stay towards the end so that there are people that still have questions.